Hello, Internet, and welcome to The Uncle Who Worked for Nintendo. I'm Bing Deadpool, and I decided to play this game after watching one... Excuse me. My cameraman is very shoddy today. Very shoddy. Uh, so, uh, I decided to play this game after seeing Pro Jared play it. Uh, a video of him playing it, and I was like, this game has enough creep factor to warrant a playthrough. It's a very text-based game, so I'm going to be talking a lot. So I hope you enjoy the cadence of my voice. Here, actually, I might... Yeah, just kind of move the mic up a little bit, so it's, it's right here. This game makes extensive use of sound. Play with headphones for the best experience. Occasionally, it may take control of your browser. It is not optimized for mobile. For content and trigger warnings, click here. The uncle who works for Nintendo. So, I got my little cursor on the screen so that way you guys can see what the hell I'm clicking. Um, I'm not going to do the trigger warnings, I'm just going to go right into this. Uh, you are 11 years old. What's your best friend's name? Andrew, Ashley, Brandon, Dave, Jessica, Megan, Nicole, Michael, Ryan. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I actually have two friends, two best friends, who are on this list right here. So, um... And I've known them about the same amount of time. Wow. Okay. Uh... I'm, I'm sorry, Kane, but I'm going to have to go with Dave. Your, bre your best friend Dave has invited you to a sleepover at his house this weekend. Seems legit. You've been friends since first grade. That's not so true. So, asking your mom is basically a formality. Um, let's... Only a formality. That's, that's okay. There we go. Uh, on Friday night, you're home for only a few hours. Long enough to pack and then get a... Fight with your get into a fight with your younger sister. I don't have a younger sister. Pack some more and watch some TV. At six sharp, you'll be standing on the sidewalk outside of Dave's house while your mom idles her car nearby. Uh, she leans out the window to you. I'm gonna up the volume just a little bit because uh, derp. I'm derping out here for a second, guys. I'm derping out. Uh, because... I'm pretty sure... that this has got some sounds to it. And it apparently doesn't have a, an audio thing on here, so... Okay. She leans out the window to you. Alright. You behave yourself now, okay? She says, as always. I'll be at work, but if anything happens, you call me. Yes, Mom. I'm going to... Or... <sighs> yeah, okay, Mom. I think I'm going to go with... Uh, yes, Mom. Yes, Mom. Because I'm a very polite boy. I'm a very polite child. It's point and click. I don't know why I have my hand on the other thing. I'll pick you up tomorrow at 3, she says again, as usual. But then she pauses, looking up at the sky, which has been overcast throughout the night. If you play outside, she adds, be careful. It's probably going to rain. Um, because I'm a good boy, I will kiss my mom goodbye. After you part, your mom drives down the street, disappearing around the corner. You turn back to Dave's house. The lights inside are glowing warmly. You can see Dave waving at you from his bedroom window on the second floor. Hop head inside. There's the sound. That's what I was looking for. I'm going to turn that up just a little bit. There we go. Dave's mom meets you just inside. Hello, she says. Dinner will be ready in just a few minutes. You can drop stuff off in the den. You and Dave are camping out there tonight. Cool! Actually, I, I would. I would totally be like, cool! Because that's, that's awesome. I like camping out in a living room area because I'm not much of a camper myself ha <laughs> the video game video game reference there actually I am a camper in the games but anyway uh, 
You drop your sleeping bag and overnight bags, your sleeping and overnight bags in the corner of the den and then pause to take a look around. Behind the couch is a grandfather clock ticking softly. Though a uh, though a set of through a set of patio doors on the far side of the room, you can see the sky is just as gray as it was when your mom left. Framed pictures line the walls over the dark fireplace. Uh, over the dark fireplace hangs a monstrous pair of antlers from a buck that Dave's dad shot years ago. And of course, there's the big screen TV. Sometimes it makes you uncomfortable how much nicer Dave's house is than yours. Anyway... Dave entered the room while you were, weren't paying attention, and he now stands at the doorway, smiling expectantly. Are you ready for dinner? he asked. Yeah, I'm fucking starving, man. Flippin' starving. Dinner passed quickly. Tonight's meal was spaghetti and meatballs, one of Dave's favorite meals. As his mother points out while piling a helping on your plate, your father cracks a beer, or Dave's father cracks a beer, and jovially interrogates you about how much trouble you and Dave have been getting in the school. I'm going to click on this and see what that does. Wait, that wasn't a beer at all. It was a glass of lemonade. Why would you even think that it was a beer? Dave's father doesn't drink alcohol. You're quite certain of that fact. And now you've remembered it. Well, whatever. Okay. Dave's father uh, sips a lemonade and jovially interrogates you about how much trouble you and Dave have been getting into at school. Dessert is heaping bowls of ice cream drizzled with chocolate sauce. You can't even finish yours. Grandfather clock chimes in the den. <laughs> Okay, so that must mean it's like, what, seven? I don't know. I don't know if I should be paying attention to the time. Uh, you go along now, says Dave's mom, smiling from her, her side of the table. We'll clean up in here. There are dogs. There are dogs about. Let's go get the TV ready, says Dave. And the two of you leave the dining room and head upstairs. Oh, wow, that's an odd background. Dave's room is immense. You stay in the den because the TV is larger there, but there's a sizable one here, flush with uh, the wall opposite of, of the full-sized bed. We'll take the we'll take the 64 down first, says Dave, heading towards his TV and opening the entertainment center cabinet. It's his prerogative, of course. He gets to choose what you play first, usually, as is with the case with any friend. But as Dave begins unhooking the cords of the N64 from the TV, you catch a sight of other things he has in there. All the major stuff. An old NES, a PlayStation, a Dreamcast. But some other things too catch... Or some other things too. Things that you don't recognize. A large black box with green highlights. Uh, probably an Xbox. Uh, a smaller purple one. Uh, that's probably the GameCube, and a large black box, uh, and a strange white and yellow tower that looks like a, a, uh, uh, uh. all right, let me start that one over, sorry. <coughs> but some other things too, uh, things that you don't rec really recognize, a large black box with green highlights, probably an Xbox. A smaller purple one, it's probably a GameCube. A strange white and yellow tower that has has what it looks like a glove resting on hooks on either side. A compact white cone. What are those? Dave looks at the clutter in the cabinet. Oh yeah, he says. They're pretty cool. I can't show them to you though. They're still secret. I promised my uncle. Of course, you suddenly remember his uncle. Of course, you, I'm sure every one of you had a friend. The uncle who works for Nintendo. I'm sure every one of you has had a friend who pretty much claimed, Oh yeah, my friend worked 
I have, you know, my, my dad's brother, otherwise known as my uncle, uh, works over at, you know, PlayStation, so, you know, I, I know about the games that are coming up, I know about, the, you know, the new Final Fantasy XI, it's supposed to be MMO and stuff, it's pretty cool, you know, you, I'm sure you probably have friends like that, that just were like, totally upping their own stature by lying straight to your face. At least that's what it seemed like, because I never freaking met the guy's uncle. And if I did, he didn't freaking play any cool video games with me. Anyway. Uh, in the corner, the grandfather clock is ticking softly, though a nearby patio said a new patio. It's getting quite dark. Okay, let me click that. It's 7 o'clock. Okay, so it is 7 o'clock right now. Okay. Uh, frame pictures line the walls. Let's see what the... Walk around the perimeter of the den, inspecting the pictures idly. Most of them are family portraits from years past. Dave cradled, cradled lovingly between his mother and father, and any other on the three of uh, their own. A happy, tidy family. Look for pictures of Dave's uncle. Yeah, we're going to go to the bottom of this mystery right now. You don't find any. Not one. Hmm... The only pictures there are Dave and his parents. Oh, okay, that's Star Fox 64, the the, the uh, multiplayer stage. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I know it's Star Fox 64 that he's playing, though. That's cool. Uh, you don't know why that makes you feel uneasy. Okay. Time passes. Uh, Dave is parked in front of the, the, the Lord's TV playing something on the N64. Oh, they're playing that Mario Kart. Oh, uh, you know what? Um, watch Dave play. Let's see. You try to relax by watching Dave play a game. After a moment, though, he looks over at you. You want to play this one, he says? Play. Sure. The game is kind of spooky character just has a flashlight and is running around some underground tunnels. Occasionally you hear what sounds like digging. You don't like it. Dave is watching you and seems amused at how uncomfortable you are. You don't say anything, so you don't look weak. You play for a while, even though there doesn't seem to be an ending. Oh god, that kind of made me jump a little bit. The clock chimes, you are in the den. Okay. Uh, in the con all right. Uh, let's check the. It's eight o'clock. Okay. Um, let's talk to him about his uncle. It began with Mew. You didn't believe him at first when Dave came to school one day and told you he'd finally caught Mew. Prove it, you said. He pulled out his Game Boy and showed you. There it was, Mew. The 151st Pokemon, available only to players at promotional events, and somehow unlocked on Dave's game. It's really strong, he says. KOs every enemy in one hit. One punch! Dave demonstrated this claim at recess, when you and some other, ki uh, when you and some other friends linked Game Boys to do battle. You were the first one down. No one else got a single hit on Dave's Mew. Oh, excuse me. In a few days, everyone had quit playing Pokemon at recess. The allure had faded. <laughs> As with any game. Uh, you asked Dave how he managed to get it. Uh, oh, my... Oh, my uncle got a job at Nintendo, said Dave. You were walking home together past one of the construction crews. Dave still lived ne next door to you at the time. Let's, let's see. There had been a storm not too long ago. Trees were collapsed all over. Buildings were collapsed. Uh, you were standing at an intersection with Dave as a truck rambled by, loaded with some rag. Tree trunks. What a bad storm. Okay. It's a stormy night now. That's interesting. Uh, Dave still lived in, at the time. Wait, this couldn't have been too long ago. When did Dave move? 
There was something nice about being neighbors. It's getting weird. Oh. He also got me this new Game Boy, said Dave, pulling out his pulling it out of his pocket. You hadn't noticed it earlier, but yes, Dave now had a sleek new Game Boy color. Until today, he had had one of the old ones, the big gray brick like yours. This one's special edition. Isn't it cool? You agreed. You snap out of your reflections. Snap out of them. Uh, da, 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 da. Remember your own Mew. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. You got your own Mew eventually. Uh, another friend had Game Shark, which you borrowed one day. You spent the entire night unlocking every Pokemon that you couldn't obtain in your copy of the game or hadn't yet traded for, including Mew, which is understandable. You could do that with a Game Shark. It didn't one hit KO. And in, like uh, it didn't one hit KO most enemies. It was incredibly weak, and you shamefully cheated the game to further make it strong enough. It even looked different from Dave's. Your Mew was small, even cute, standing there with its round, cheerful eyes. But Dave's, but when Dave's whipped out, <laughs> but when Dave's had whipped out. Every or wiped out, excuse me. Let me try that again. But when Dave's wiped out everyone at the school, it looked completely different. Compact, snarling, fierce. Uh, you asked him why. What? He said. That had been. What he had said that had been here in the den. Oh, that thing? Let me see. Hold on. Dave had moved. Uh, David moved by then, but how long was that after the first storm, after he got Mew? You can't remember. Man, it sucks being a kid. You have a hard time remembering stuff. It had been a while since anyone talked about Pokemon. Well, my uncle got me a special edition Mew, first of all, he said, smirking a little bit, but not looking away from the PlayStation game he was playing it was back then. Uh, that's why mine looked different. Second of all, mine is, can one-hit KO because it's the real Mew. You asked what he meant by that. Just what I said, Dave replied. You cheated, and you got a fake Mew. So, of course, there'd be problems, glitches, and junk. You felt your cheeks redden. But not me, Dave said again. I got the real Mew, and only me. My brother was so jealous. So jelly. Incredibly jelly. Dave's brother. What about him? Why doesn't it? Why does that... Uh, that? Dave's brother. What about him? Why does remembering that comment make you feel... uneasy? You snap out of your reflections. The clock chimes. You are in the den. Uh, Dave's mother bustles into the room, holding a large ceramic bowl filled with popcorn underarms. What, what are you kids doing, she asked. Or, how are you kids doing? Excuse me, I'm Englishing so well this entire episode, I shouldn't read games, but that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. Uh, how are you kids doing, she asked. Good, says, good, says Dave, his eyes not moving from the television. I hope you're having fun, says Dave's mom. Here's some popcorn, extra butter. She places it on the floor by Dave. Almost immediately, Dave is shoveling popcorn in his mouth. Meanwhile, his mother smirks at him and then back to you. There's sodas in the kitchen if you get thirsty, she says. And pizza, and some pizza from the other night if you get hungry. I'm, I'm very polite, so I'm going to say thank you. Uh, she looks at Dave. Your father's gone to bed. I'll be home, or I'll be there soon myself. I want you two to keep it quiet, alright? Yes, ma'am. Oh, and before I forget, she adds, your uncle called. He suddenly had some business here in town tomorrow, and he's driving in early. He'll be here around midnight. For the first time, Dave stopped playing his game, stops eating popcorn, and turns to look at his mother. 
Okay, he says. I want you two to welcome him in. He'll be very tired and very hungry, so offer him something to eat before he goes to bed. Okay, ma'am. Good night, kids. And with that, she's gone. Uh, let's check the time. It's nine o'clock. Okay, so he'll be here in about three hours. And why does that make me feel uneasy and give me goose pimples? It gives me the goosey pimples. Uh, Dave is parked in front of him playing something on the N64. There's a large bowl of popcorn on the table. You grab a handful of popcorn. It's buttery and delicious. Oh, I love buttery and delicious popcorn. Oh, back to that Mario Kart. Ask about Uncle's visit. So, why is your uncle coming? Uh, there. Dave shrugs. Business. But I thought he worked for, for Nintendo. No, I won't... I won't badger him that much. I'll just go, what sort of business? Stuff for Nintendo. Alright, alright. I see how you are, Dave. I see how you are. Uh, what does Nintendo have... Or does Nintendo have a lot of business out here? What does Nintendo do here? Oh, okay. I'll just kind of squash it, I guess. You drop the conversation in silence pretty much what I was thinking of doing. Uh, I'm going to go to the kitchen and uh, get me some of that pizza because I'm suddenly getting kind of hungry. Uh, passing through the empty dining room, you enter the kitchen, which is also deserted right now. Go to the fridge. Uh, there are a few things here. Soda, cold pizza, milk, a, a water pitcher. Return to the den. Um, I'll get soda. Grab your snack and exit the kitchen. You head back to the den. <coughs> There's a lot of reading in this. I'm sorry. I did not properly work my voice out for this beforehand. Uh, it should be... It's 9.30. Okay. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's talk to Dave. What should you guys talk about? Well, you know, since he's a gamer friend of mine, I think we should... Oh, hold on. School games. Ask if Dave thinks the storm will be as bad as the last one. Uh... uh I don't like the sound of the wind. Do you remember the storm we had that tore all those down all those trees? I don't know what, you don't, what you're talking about, says Dave. You don't remember? Remember what? Uh, remember what? Uh, the storm, it happened a few weeks ago. It was huge. It took down trees. Actually, forgot until tonight. There was a huge storm a few weeks ago, I think. I'm going to go with that one. Dave shakes his head. If it was important, I'm sure I would have remembered it, he says. You fall silent. Alright, let's talk about games. Uh, you bring up the subject of fighting games, and very quickly you and Dave are involved in a slow motion, but not very serious, or slow moving, but not very serious argument about whether or not they are fun. An hour passes. Ooh. I might have wasted time with that by accident. Uh, you are in the den. That sounded like... Yep. Uh, that is Star Fox again. Uh... It begins raining outside. What time is it? It's 10 o'clock. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. I feel like you ha might have to go to the bathroom. Alright, so I'll go to the bathroom. You head to the bathroom down the hall from the den. There's a shower, a linen closet, and a toilet. Well, I have to go to the bathroom, so I'm going to go to the toilet. Uh, you go to the bathroom and wash your hands. Are you done here um yeah go back you go back to the den you head back to the den um let's talk to Dave again let's talk about school uh, you and Dave discuss class for a few hours when the teacher publicly chastised a teammate for you mutually dislike. 
an hour past. Clock chimes, you are in the den. So now it's 11 o'clock, right? Um, watch Dave play. You grit your teeth. My uncle will be here soon, Dave says, looking at the clock. You knew that, of course. Dave smiles at you. You want to play one more game before he gets here? Um, you can play. I'll just watch. You watch as, as Dave plays some in inscrutable, I think. I'm sorry. I have very bad English. Uh, you watch him play some puzzle game. Okay, moment of truth time. The uncle's supposed to be here. The grandfather clocks a clock chimes an hour. Dave suddenly looks up from Nan 64. It's time, he says. Is your uncle here? Someone's knocking at Someone knocks at the front door. Okay. That's him, Dave says, suddenly standing up. I should go let him in. As he leaves the den, you realize you could follow, but part of you really feels like being scarce for a bit. I'm gonna be scarce. Um... Run to the bathroom. As it's loading up. You run down the hallway to the bathroom and lock the door behind you. Or at least, this could have been in the bathroom. The walls are bare and white. There's no sink or toilet. But there's some odd featureless white boxes that stand in the sh shower. Well, I'm going to go in the linen closet. Crawl into the plain white box that is, is about the size of the linen closet. You close it behind you. From the front of the house, you can hear the slam, the front door slam open. After that, you hear... You don't hear anything except a bad expression, child. What? The rain. No. No, it's not the rain, but that's a voice in the back of your head like bad expression. I am... I am coming for you, child. Like something you can't even begin to describe. Though the, the, you lock the door behind her, you hear it open easily. Something walks in. Hold your breath. You are not exactly sure how you know something is out there, but because you don't wait, you're not exact. You're not sure how you know something is out there because you don't exactly. Oh, child! Hear it move, moving, but you don't know it's there, and then stop. Poor, poor child! Right outside your hiding spot, it opens the door. Even though you immediately realize it doesn't even have hands. Child, I am so, oh so hungry, child. You cannot run, child. Hello, child. No more worries, child. Hello, child. Struggle cease. Screaming cease. I have friends for you, child. Friends for you in the dark. You will play forever in the dark. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Okay. The uncle who works for Nintendo. Okay, I did done goofed in that, I think. So, wow, that, that was creepy. That was, for a text game, that was really creepy, and I don't even know if I was reading that at the end properly, because I was so freaking jar jittery and jarred, and, oh, maybe I was supposed to go to the kitchen and give him pizza. Because remember, it said he was going to be hungry, and he just said he was hungry. Ah. Oh might have to do that in the next the time I play this. So, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button under the screen. If you really like it and want to see more, subscribe and be on the lookout for more. I'm Bing Deadpool. This has been The Uncle Who Works for Nintendo. And until we see each other in the next video, peace out. So, I'm gonna... Yeah. Here. Ah! Okay. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I have to. I have to. I have to. Ah! Ah! <laughs> the fuck was that? Hey.
Oh yeah, my, my uncle works for Nintendo. Oh, did I mention he's also the Slender Man? Eh.